Now we know that the chapters and verses of the Bible were not originally in the scrolls. Man divided the chapters. But what is amazing is that in the Hebrew, the Hebrew alphabet consists of 22 letters. The book of Revelation consists of 22 chapters. And every chapter of Revelation stamped in order the meaning of the Hebrew letter. It's just phenomenal. What it shows is the inspiration of the scriptures. The 21st letter, which corresponds to this chapter, the, the letter is a, a shin, and it, it literally means teeth, ivory, point of a rock, a peak. That's really not so important in this context here. What's important follows. It means to devour, to consume, to destroy something sharp, the word of God, El Shaddai or Almighty God. In other words, this letter means El Shaddai. And what do we have in this chapter? We have the manifestation and the realization, revelation that Jesus is El Shaddai. We have the fact that he will devour, consume, and destroy. It started out, I create a new heaven and a new earth. He uh, devoured the first to make room for the second. And the fact that El Shaddai stands there, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. And we've seen that many times here. We also said that the Gospel of John corresponds to the same structure. In the 21st chapter of John, we have this. We're looking for, does it speak of Jesus as being El Shaddai, the Almighty, and is he... Is he bringing up the importance of something sharp, which I believe he's talking about the Word of God here? Look from the Gospel in chapter 21. He says, So when they dine, Jesus says to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? He saith, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He's appearing, this is after the resurrection, he's appearing as, they know he's God. At this time, in this this appearance, they know he's resurrected God in the flesh. And he says, feed my lambs. Then he says to him again, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He says unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest I love. He says unto him, feed my sheep. Then he says, he saith unto them the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said, feed my sheep. In other words, this is the last chapter of the gospel of John. And Jesus takes, Peter was like the leader. And he takes Peter to the side. He says, do you really love me, Peter? Because he denied him three times. And he did. And he did. But do you love me, Peter? Yes, I love you. You know I love you. And here's what I want you to do. If you love me, feed. Feed the sheep. What feed the lambs. The Word of God is the food. And I believe that's where it comes to the sharp and the devour. Did you know... There's, like I said, there's many things that are done in the church. And we are all gifted in many different ways to minister to the body. But to the leadership, Jesus said, Do you really love me? Feed my lambs. Because see, if the pastor doesn't feed the sheep, and the elders don't feed the sheep... Who is going to feed the sheep? We can all sing songs. We can, but who's going to feed the sheep? We have to put word of God has to come into the folks. And he said to Peter, "Do you love me?" See, in some places they don't want to hear, Pastor. 
There's, there's some churches, the people, people, if you, if you preach the word, they'll walk out. Well, how are they going to ever hear? Feed my lambs. And sometimes it's difficult because people don't want to hear. Here you have the, uh, the other side of it here. The emphasis, remember, we, we went through this where the, the Lord of God, of the holy prophets, he sent his angel to what? To show his servants the word. Remember, he said, and don't seal it up. Make sure they know the word. Did you know there's one thing that scared me in the scripture? Because I knew I was called to teach. And it says that the teacher will stand a greater judgment. That's scary. Yeah, it is. Especially when you think you're right from all the... Exactly. You You better know you're right. If you're teaching, you better know you're right. Now, how many false prophets do you have out there? And they don't care. You know, the universities, they're filled with people who are teaching that the word of God is not the word of God. God help them. They're telling people, come, come to, to the university and, and, and learn of me, the great, the great uh, PhD pro, uh, professor, and I'll teach you the Bible. And the first thing they teach him is they, they, you can't have faith in the Bible. The Bible's not really inspired. Jesus is not really God. This is the kind of pre, the teachers we've got out there. Or they stand up there and they teach things they know aren't true. They find themselves, they wake up one day. Now, every, all of us, like you had brought up, all of us are similar, right? We all fail. But some people go into particular denominations and then they wake up. God enlightens them with the truth. And they don't tell anybody. They stand on the pulpit and they don't tell anybody. And they are the only light, the only chance that the people in that church will ever have of hearing the truth. God has one man. God has one person. And they won't tell him the truth. And they know. It's not that they don't know. Many know the truth. But they don't want to cause any waves. I would hate to meet Jesus and say, I knew the truth, but I didn't teach the truth. Remember we brought up the, about the Ark of the Covenant? We said about the two cherubim was on the mercy seat, the two witnesses. Because we've also said that 22 letters, and they point to 22 different constellations in the heavens. And this one, the Shin points to Canis Major. You can see the constellation here, and it kind of looks like a big dog. There's actually two dogs up there. There's a Canis Major and Canis Minor. And they're, they're actually referred to as the two witnesses up there in heaven. But here, the brightest star within the constellation Canis Major is located in the head of the dog, and his name is Sirius, which means the prince. Ovid and Virgil both referred to Sirius as Anubis. Anubis was an Egyptian guardian of the visible horizon and the solstices. In appearance, Anubis is said to have been the head of a jackal, you know, which is where they get the idea of a dog. The picture of the dog is not really there, right? It's just the, the meaning of the stars. This Anubis was the same god, now this is from Egyptian mythology, whose special or particular responsibility was that of a transportation of the souls of the dead, both righteous and wicked, to the halls of judgment. You don't get in the city until you pass through the judgment. Within the Akkadian constellation, the brightest star is called Kasista, which means the leader. Throughout the sacred books of Persia, the star is praised as Tistria, which means the chieftain of the east. The star in his left forefoot is likewise named Mizram, which, uh, or, or Mirzam, which means the prince or the ruler. The name is derived from the Arabic Al-Mirzam, uh, which means the announcer. 
you'll see here, here's, here's a picture of how they sit amongst the other constellations. Here's the big dog, Canis Major, and there's the little dog. And did you remember when we talked about cancer, what cancer represented? Well, let's go ahead and read it here. Um, the brightest star within the constellation Canis Major um, was named Pro, Procon, which means the Redeemer. So the little dog speaks of the Redeemer. Canis Major speaks of the Prince. Jesus is both the Prince and the Redeemer, isn't he? In both. He's, but remember the idea of the two witnesses and, and on that ark... Um, cancer represents a certain state of perfected being, the completion of the journey from darkness to light or the journey from death to the resurrection of new life, the promise of a fortress of refuge for the people of God and an eternity of peace and safety. Where are we going? What is this chapter talking about? It's, ta- it's emphasizing the new Jerusalem. That is the end of our journey. That is the end of, that's eternity. We spend eternity and that's what that constellation represented and these two stand at the door and it's interesting that they stand at the door at the uh, at the place of eternal rest but people have to be transferred to that city right look at behind them is a ship and this ship has always been understood to to mean that the people will the souls will be transported to heaven into that paradise of God. That's what it represented. Argo represent the transporting of souls to heaven as a solar vehicle transporting these souls to the heavenly place of safety and protection. Remember we said that the people in the heavenly city in New Jerusalem, they will not only be in the New Jerusalem, but when the new earth is created, they're going to be in the, they're going to go wherever that new earth is. We don't know if it'll be in the same solar system. But whoever is in that city is going to be transported over there, right? And here's, here's the way they really should be represented, because they're not really dogs. One, it represents the prince sitting on the throne, and the other represents the redeemer. And our Remember the Jews had, they believed they had two messiahs. They remember there was a redeemer. He was one of the messiahs, and a prince that would come, that would sit upon the throne. Well, we know that there's not two messiahs, there's one. He comes first as the redeemer, he comes second as the one who sits upon the throne. That's what we see in the heavens here. See, the pictures are, are kind of, you know, they, they got them fouled up, meaning dogs, because of that whole idea of, of Anubis uh, being uh, uh, like a head of a jackal. But uh, you have the two witnesses standing Guarding, just like those angels guarded the entrance into the city, they're guarding the way into the city and also responsible for the transportation of those who will be included in the New Jerusalem. And isn't that what Jesus does as Redeemer and Prince? He is the one who will transport you to your eventual place of eternal security.